Hi everyone, so this is Crazy Taxi by Sega. Yes, that Crazy Taxi, the franchise we know and love, unfortunately destroyed for this new mobile release. Now, firstly I'm going to get the good bit out of the way. The gameplay here is actually very satisfying. The graphics are fantastic, some of the best we've seen on a mobile device this year. The developers have done a phenomenal job at creating a fast and fluid game. Anyway, so that's the game bit out of the way. Now let's focus on where this thing has gone horribly, horribly wrong for Sega. In-app purchases. Yes, that old chestnut again. You would have thought after the debacle of EA and Dungeon Keeper getting slapped so hard by the ASA that Sega would be a little bit more timid in, well, shoveling in-app purchases into this game in such a way they have. So let's really take a look, shall we? Essentially, your car requires fuel, your taxi requires fuel. You will only be able to complete a certain number of taxi missions before your fuel will run out and then you have to use diamonds to refill your car. Your car can only take part in certain missions if it is fast enough. You will have to use gold to upgrade your car in order to complete certain missions. Now let's take a look at the cost of some of these items. So if you want to buy dollars, you're looking at 15,000 in-game gold will cost you £2.11. Right the way up to, and I thought this was rather cheeky of them, £70 for 1 million coins. And they've used the tagline, won the lottery. Well, I'm sure that's how it will feel to the executives when people pay for that. Diamonds, which is the way that we refill the car, are, well, just as abusive really. 300 diamonds for £2.11 and right the way up to a truckload of diamonds for £70. Again, I think that's probably what the executives at Sega are really hoping they'll be able to buy after a couple of months this game has been on the App Store. You can also, if you don't want to put your hand in your pocket, you can earn rewards using those really annoying um, reward services, you know, watching a video, liking things on Facebook, the, the usual kind of stuff. And also then they've got this offer system as well provided by one of those third party companies. You know, we've seen this kind of stuff before. It really is trashware. Now, here's the main issue. Sega are claiming this game is freemium rather than free to play. So it's going to be very, very interesting to see how the Advertising Standards Authority and potentially Trading Standards will actually look at this game and say, well, actually, what is freemium? You've used the word free and free comes before premium. Is this game predominantly free? No, it is not, because there are too many barriers in the way after just 10 to 15 minutes of gameplay. Essentially, you are going to run out of the free credits they're giving you. Now, the other issue there is that even if you, um, you know, take one of the free offers, it's not really free because you're handing over, in one way or another, personal data. So either you're signing up for an offer, you're liking something, you're retweeting something. Essentially, you are tying in some way you and your individual nature, your ID, to a recommendation of this game or taking on an offer. Effectively, you've had to trade something for that. I can't see that's free myself. It's free if there is no expectation of you having to hand over anything in exchange for getting something. This is not free. It is very much a premium game, but one where essentially it's been put out for nothing, but anything actions you want to really do in this game to play it will cost you money one way or the other. They will cost you something. You are handing over something in order to progress in this game. Be that actual cash or be that giving away something personal for you. Effectively, there is an exchange going on here. If you want some free diamonds, you're gonna to have to like something. You're giving a like away. Well, that doesn't really strike me as free. There is still a trade going on there in order to acquire diamonds and gold. Now, I really do hope that this is the final time we ever see big games companies trying to abuse the player base in this way, but I doubt it's going to be. This is uh, part of the course now. The real question is, as gamers, should we accept this or should we fight back? Personally, I'm in favour of fighting back, and the way we can fight back is through our regulatory bodies in individual countries, the Advertising Standards Authority, the Office of Fair Trading in the United Kingdom, and also various uh, bodies within European countries and at the European Council as well. I'm going to make sure that I mention this to the ASA, as I did with Dungeon Keeper, and we saw how that one turned out. At the end of the day, we're going to have to get to the bottom of what is truly free, what is premium, what is freemium, and what is free to play. And we're going to have to try and put that into stone, really, and what those expectations are likely to be for the consumer. And that's actually what's really important here. It's not how games developers and their publishing houses want their game to be seen. Well, it's freemium, so it must be. It's actually how consumers react 
to that statement that is really important. If consumers don't consider it to be freemium, or free to play, should I say, or free as in predominantly free with some premium aspects there, then it really isn't. You know? At the end of the day, laws serve the majority of the population, not a corporate entity outside of a particular country who is just trying to push a particular product. So it's going to be really interesting to see how this kind of filters down to other games developers over the next six months or so, and whether people like uh, the ASA are going to slap this one as well as being, well, quite frankly, unfair to consumers and misleading. Sega, you get my wooden spoon award. We are actually going to get some wooden spoons made up, um, and we'll be sending those out to games companies that produce games like this. Uh, a brilliant looking game, a phenomenal game engine, beautiful to look at and really solid gameplay, destroyed by in-app purchases yet again. Well done Sega, here's a wooden spoon. Thanks for watching. Do please subscribe to us on YouTube and Twitch and please like and comment on these videos as well. We love to chat.